Hello everybody and welcome to Resident Arcade episode 77. My name is Chris and as always I'm joined by my co-host Matt and Danny. I nearly said Denny, but that'll oh, do. Danny? Denny. Denny's. No, let's uh, not. If we, if we carry this on, I'm, I'm gone. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we, we are recording a little bit earlier in the week than we normally do. Normally we record on Wednesdays and it is Monday currently. I know that doesn't mean much difference to the podcast listeners, but it does mean a little bit of difference to us in terms of what we can... We, we can talk about because we usually have a, a few more days to prepare. Um, so hopefully we'll keep you entertained. Hopefully we'll um, keep everything going. Danny, what's coming coming up in our flashback section? So I've been trying not to cry over how shit I am. A tank simulator game that no one's heard of. Matt's been smashing his keyboard in 6-8 compound time in Clone Hero. And Chris mm. has uh, played nothing new except this week's competition game. Chris has played nothing new. Well, I have. I've been Ooh. hammering a new game, but it's that—it's the competition game. This my oh, turn this week. Okay. Well, in preview hot pants, we've got a whole host of games and gaming news to discuss, including the Nintendo Switch Lite Joy-Con drift issues, what the hell a social strand game is, and if causing mischief as a goose is our kind of thing. An editorial standpoint, I think it might be. It absolutely is, by, by the sounds of it. Well, let's let's wait till we get onto that. First of all. Let's get on to our competition. What are you selling? What are you what buying? Are you uh, so for like the benefit of new listeners, uh, the competition is something we run every week. We uh, Somebody on the show tries to sell a game to the other hosts. Um, for If the other hosts would buy it at full price, they get one whole point. If they'd buy it at the lowest sale price, they get half a point. Uh, it's my turn this week, and it's my last chance to get some points for this season. Uh, so we've only got three episodes of the season left. And I am going to get the timer up and kick off straight away. And we have two minutes. My game is RimWorld. Now, it sounds ominous. It sounds like a porn game on Steam, but it's not. It's actually really good. <laughs> it is a space cowboy colony story simulator. It's a bit like Dwarf Fortress, if you've ever heard of Dwarf Fortress. It looks like Prison Architect. And essentially, you control loads of little dudes. There's loads of scenarios to choose from. Um, you are essentially crash-landed on a planet. You either get one guy who's uber-rich, or you can customize your scenarios in any way you want. But, but the, the general scenarios are one guy that's uber-rich, got loads of money, but not much else. You've got four guys that all have different um, skills, and it's randomly generated. Some people start off with a limp. Some people start off with, like... Um, a, a drug addiction. Some people start off with like um, codependencies on on various different things. Some people prefer being nudists. Like all the all the different uh, uh, colony guys, they play out a story while you tell them what to do. So you queue up commands and you kind of say, right, I want this wall to be built, or I want this, uh, I want you to go and capture this prisoner, or I want. There's, there's literally a, f a metric ton of things to do. Um, I've got 40 se 46 seconds left. Right, so all the guys are semi-autonomous. They all have different moods as well, so you have to keep them all happy, like you do again in, in, in like Dwarf Fortress and um, uh, Prison Architect. They, they have parties, they have affairs with each other. Um, there's loads of random events that occurred. Something that just happened is uh, today when I was playing it is a toxic fallout occurred. I couldn't go outside, so I had to stay under all my roofed area. Um, once that happened, I basically started starving because I ran out of food and all the food had died outside, all the plants had died outside. Then a heat storm, a, a heat wave hit, so everybody inside started baking to death um, and I didn't have enough cooling sufficiently. Um, then, um, then I got raided by some pirates and then I got some man-eating terriers, um, Yorkshire terriers going to try to do my colony and that's it. Time over. Right. Wait, is this in game or in Blackpool? This is in. <laughs> <laughs> so, it, it was an unfortunate, right? The, it was an unfortunate sequence of events, but it, it, I can't <laughs> believe I survived it. Normally, when that happens, you're dead. I must have had just enough things to to keep going. So, any questions? Do you understand what kind of game it is to start off with? <laughs> See, yeah, I do. From the prison architect thing, that was quite useful to envision. So. Do you want to go first, Danny? Uh, no, I'll formulate something else. You formulate away. Okay, so you say it's like Dwarf Fortress. 
for someone who hasn't played Dwarf Fortress, can you explain a little bit about how you actually interact with the game? Like, what what do you tell people to like? How did how does it work? So there's there's like a, a list of commands that are set up in the background. Everybody in your colony. So let's say you start with four people. Those four people have a, a list of priorities of things to do. So they're semi-autonomous. You can take control of them, especially when there's a raid going on and you want to like shoot people or you want to tell them to get cover there and things like that. You can take control of them. Um, but normally what happens is they follow a set, a set list of priorities. By default, you have a list of skills for each person and you can check boxes to say, um, uh, or you can set high level priorities or check boxes to say, I want this person to do mining. I want this person to do construction. I want this person to do planting, um, every, everything and anything you can think of in a, in a you know, I want this person to look after prisoners. I want this guy to look after, uh, to doctor people. Um, th th there's, it's too, there's too much to describe, but you can drill down into it further and then you can set levels of priority. So as they do things, they also build skills up as well. Um, so you don't control the people directly. You tell them what to do. And then as you play the game and this top-down kind of prison architect type view or Dwarf Fortress, which was ASCII and absolute madness, if anyone's ever played it, it's one of them games that you play and you're like, I haven't got a clue what's going on, but then you essentially turn into Cypher from the Matrix where he goes, you know, redhead here, blonde here, that kind of... You can see what's going on. You can, you can decipher the ASCII and go, right, I can see that's a tree. <laughs> <laughs> you know that kind of thing i can see that's a that's a that's one of my dwarfs or whatever and you can have actually have graphic overlays on on dwarf forest as well but this is a fully uh, fully graphic graphic 2d kind of what's the word <laughs> um game game yeah it, it looks like it looks like a game you can tell what everything is the the main difference between dwarf forest and this is dwarf forest is infinitely more complicated and infinitely deeper and you have different Z levels as well in Dwarf Fortress. Like there's 150 Z levels that you can dig down and down and down into the earth. In this, just one level and you're, you're basically on a horizontal kind of plane. Okay. Did it answer your question? Mm, yeah. All right. Danny? Is there an end game to RimWorld? There is. Is there like a story it takes you through and you encounter that? the same every time or no so well the end game is the same however every single game every single instance of it no matter how you generate everything's randomly generated um you generate this rim world this planet it generates about 30 percent of the planet's surface and you pick an area to start in and there's different biomes and um, so you usually if you're starting the game for the first time pick like a temperate forest with low hostility and not near any pirates and that kind of thing if you want it to be really hard starting a snow biome or starting a, a, a swamp biome where you're going to get malaria or something, you know, <laughs> um, it, honestly, I, the, the amount of things that happen in it, I can't believe that that Yorkshire Terrier thing happened to me though. I got a lot of man eating Yorkshire Terriers ar arrive on the map. Um, about yesterday, I think. <laughs> um, so yeah, you, you start the game and the end game is a, you, you build a rocket. It's very much like Factorio. You build a rocket to, to leave, but you have to travel to the rocket. And it's very difficult to get enough resources in your starting area area to travel all the way to the other side of the planet, which is where the rocket usually spawns after about three or four days or something. Um, but basically, you want to set up different um, different camps on the way there. Yeah, it's very it's it's difficult to get your head around. It's very very deep. Okay. Cool. Hmm. Matt. Okay. So. With the, do you actually construct the bases yourself and then tell them how to interact with them, or is it a case of do you have to find structures and then how, how does it work like from a building perspective? It entirely depends on the map that spawns. Um, so scenarios that I've played, um, if you start in a temperate forest, there's there's very little, usually a very very few buildings that are already there. So you have to instruct your guys to build an area, but you have to get the resources to do that start off with wooden walls, very flammable, very quick to build, but very flammable. Um, but you can mine rocks and mine steel and mine components and various other bits and bobs. And then there's loads of random events that occur that give you additional resources, but you basically have to, you, you mine, uh, 
the one that I played right now is I've got a huge amount of rock on my level, so I'm mining into the rock. It's a very difficult scenario because you're you have to mine in, then build, and then smooth the rocks and smooth all of the floor and basically make it so it's like nice for the people to live in. It's you can't just carve a hole out of a rock and let someone live there. It has to be big enough for them to be comfortable. They have to have nice quality furniture. They have to all of that builds up over the time. The more skills that your guys get, it's very very micromanaging. It's a it is very very micromanaging. Um. So yeah, it's it varies considerably depending on the map biome that you're in. You might start with absolutely no resources anyway, and you have to figure it out somehow. Okay. Danny? Don't know. I don't know if I've got any more questions. I kind of, I, I'm envisioning it and I can imagine what it's like. I've got an absolute ton of other information, but I can't, I can't tell you unless you ask a question yeah, about it. The questions. I didn't get through half of it, you know. Um, I've, I've got another one if you want me to go. Well, I can, I can start the easiest question in the world. Can you play it co-op with people? No. 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 Okay. S totally single, single player. player. Uh, there may be mods out there. I haven't looked, to be fair, but I, it doesn't strike me as the kind of game you could co-op with somebody. It's it's a it's a management sim. You okay. know, it, it's the Sims quite literally on all of the drugs on the planet. It's ridiculously in depth and complex. Um, yeah. Sims is okay. a bad example. Do, I mean, Dwarf Fortress <laughs> is the closest, and. Dwarf Fortress crossed with Prison Architect. Yeah. If you've ever played either of those, it's very, very similar to them, those kind of games. Go on then, Matt. Um, obviously, you said you kind of drew a, compar a little comparison to Factorio. Mm -hmm. Does it have anything to do with, like, obviously, you've got automation for the people. Do you have anything like automation for building and mining and things like that? Or is, is that kind of where the similarity ends? You don't have automation in terms of factorial building like conveyor belts or building factories or that kind of thing. But yes, the whole game is about optimizing routes and optimizing your colonists. So if a colonist takes, you might have one colonist who's particularly good at cooking, but they're absolutely rubbish at hunting. So you'll have another colonist go out and do the hunting. They'll kill a deer, bring it back to the freezer that you've built and you have to set the temperatures and everything. I mean, it's ridiculously deep. Um, and you have to figure out how the, the temperature flow works as well. Cause that's, that's a killer at the very beginning. The first time I played it again, this time round, I started off and I had a heat wave within about three or four days and I hadn't set any coolers up and my, everyone just baked to death. <laughs> you know, <laughs> someone had a heart attack because they were too hot and <laughs> you can get dementia as well in the game. Anyway, um, uh, <laughs> not that one in. Yeah. Note. <laughs> there's so many, so many cool little things that you can do. Like really late in the game, there's so many cool things that that happen that you can like, yeah, you know, uh, body parts. You can bloody, you can you can customize particular body parts on on people, and you can get them prosthetic limbs and things like that. And I forgot what the question was, Matt. I got a bit carried away. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what, Chris? We'll just we'll, we'll mark that one as answered. Eh? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> So I mean, there was automation, wasn't it? So yeah, you, you bring in, you bring in, um, you bring in a deer. He dumps it in the in the freezer. So then the the guy who's cooking butchers the deer, or someone else might butcher the deer, and then that person picks up the meat and then cooks it and then puts it in the other storage unit to make make sure that someone there's food for people to eat. So all of that can be automated and optimized based on how long the paths are. Some people. They might get, oh God, there's so many other little things, but I'm going to shut up. I think you've had three questions each, haven't you? I'm on two, but I can't think of a third, so we're fine. I, we can... I, I can't even think of one to tag in for you, Danny, I'm afraid. No. I did have one, but I've forgotten it. Okay, no. right. Fair enough. So then, question is, and I haven't looked at the prices. I got so carried away <laughs> with, with the detail and playing the game. This... Yeah, prosthetics. <laughs> Um, can you automate it? Well, you can get prosthetic arms. That's kind of the same thing. <laughs> well, he wasn't sick. really walking because he was using his prosthetic legs, and we all know that that doesn't require energy. <laughs> Every part of his body is prosthetic. Ergo, robot. <laughs> <laughs> right, give me a sec. I shall find uh, it on the on the Steam store. It's um, I've I've got it here for you, actually, if you want, Chris. The 
historical low and current best. Okay, right. Well, I have current, Jesus Christ, currently it's twenty seven seventy nine. Holy shit. Full price. I mean, it, it's a deep game, so I can... I mean, I got it early access, so I didn't pay anywhere near that. But the cheapest it's ever been... Nah. Twenty two ninety nine. Wow. Really? Is it whatever you got, Matt? Is that the cheapest you've got as well? Same, I, same here for me. Well, I didn't look at the prices before I tried to sell this. Jesus. <laughs> Cock this one up, haven't I you? Have, I have, I <laughs> have. I can tell you though, if you like management sims, it's it's a bloody good one. It, it's, but, but anyway, I, I've I've dug my hole, Danny. I don't think I would buy it. No, Man, not into my micromanager games because I lose track very very quickly. Oh, to yeah. the point where I, yeah, it just escapes me. RTSs have pushed me. Like, do you know what I mean? It's just like so much to concentrate on. I need to be remembered to be doing this, that, and the other. I think I would suck. I suck at Prison Architect. <laughs> like my guys are beating the shit out of each other like five minutes in it's just like they look at each other it's just like do you know what i don't like this prison it's shit that tile's a crap choice and they just go and shank each other so i can't imagine even attempting Rimworld. i um, just... <laughs> I, I, last time i played prison architect i got a mint prison right i I'd, I'd, I'd built it like perfectly known everyone was like getting let go every five seconds and then i got this one inmate who just would not he just kicked off every time i couldn't do anything <laughs> I ended up executing him because I was like, right, <laughs> just kill him. It's just, he it, it was, it was honestly, he came out of solitary, he kicked off and it, he set <laughs> fires and he, he shanked everyone and, and beat guards up. It was ridiculous. Anyway, Matt, right. So would you buy it at the lowest price or at the highest price? Chris, you can't just execute all your problems. <laughs> <laughs> In that instance, I think he killed a few guards. So I think I got away with it. That's why I could actually execute him. Uh, I'll put him on death row for that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. okay. But I had to build um, the entire death row because it was a it was a relatively quiet prison. I had to build <laughs> death row just for him. Never got used again. <laughs> it was just for that one guy. <laughs> anyway, Matt. well, thank God you're not in a true position. Of power, that's all I can say. Um, at the lowest price, I'd, the thing is, if it was cheaper, yeah, but not at twenty three quid for me. I don't think, Chris. No. Oh. I'm sorry about That's that. It's a right shame. It's it's it does sound like the sort of thing I would play, but just not at that money. Fair enough. That's the first zero points I've got. Well, mm. I'm on what zero point one six C five. Anyway, so yes, on that sad, pathetic note, let's move <laughs> on. <laughs> I got I so excited about that as well. I've played it for another like fifteen hours this week, getting prepared, <laughs> reminding myself how it plays, and got addicted to it again. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> I, I, "This is my, my third scenario now, and it's going well this time, even though a catastrophe happened." But the previous two, uh, I just died within minutes because I forgot everything. <laughs> if, if you want to Steam Family share it to me, then I'll play it. But well, you can't give me points for that. That's it's what it's called. What you're selling. Oh. I'll give you 0.1626 points if your family share it to me. <laughs> if my family share it to me. <laughs> no. That's point. You're <laughs> one more of a point, you twat. <laughs> okay, so let's move on to our flashback section then. So, this is what I've witted on. Who, else, who wants to go first? Danny, do you want to talk oh, about your okay. pointless <laughs> game? <laughs> I, I have been playing World of Tanks. And it's something I have like kind of steered away from every time it's been mentioned to me because it's one of those free to plays and you kind of know what you're getting into when you when it's got its own launcher and you have to create a separate account you kind of know what you're getting into and yes it is very much like that you get into the game it takes you through a bit of a tutorial but then it's just all in your face you've got notifications everywhere about buy these tickets buy mm -hmm. these pieces of gold and once I think it's one of those games where you definitely need to get someone to get you into it, and that's what's happened. One of my mates has said, "Come play World of Tanks." I'm like, "All right, I'll give it a go." The gameplay side of it's actually rather fun. It's basically just it doesn't adhere to sides, so you can have tanks from fucking every country all on one side, and there are tanks on the other side. And basically, you can either capture each other's bases or you eliminate each other based on the map and uh, those are the two win conditions for the game mode that i've played Unsure. i think there's a couple more but they're a bit 
wackier like you, i think you can go around in a circuit and like race other tanks whilst also kind of like jousting if you know what i mean with turrets so you can shoot them <laughs> on the way past and like it's like crazy shit like that um, so it's not an authentic milsim then an yeah. authentic milsim yeah. yeah it's not actually like it's not as simmy as something like war thunder where the tanks actually do behave like real tanks like oh i need to turn around and shoot that guy and it's just like click 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 and it's like you know slowly bringing your reticule up to but you're dead it's not it's a bit more <laughs> arcadey than that um it's 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 good fun i'm i'm a bit frustrated with it at the minute because i'm shit at it but i'm i'm gonna put a few more hours into it and get better but i mean i think i'm at like tier four at the moment so it goes up in tiers of tanks tier one two to i think it's ten is the top and the higher tiers you go with the tanks generally the better people you're playing against that's just generally how it works but people do run sort of like lower tiers in higher tier games so you can have i think we've been in tier six games before with tier four tanks so there's that kind of level of you've got the bigger boys with you but your tanks are also effective in some you know in to a degree you're helpful in the match you're not just useless because you're outmatched with bigger tanks and stuff because you can go around the map and spot people and that's the mechanic in the game that is quite interesting so every tank you have has like a spotting distance and it shows you it on a mini map it's got a spotting distance but you've also got things like bushes and stuff that you can hide in and they give you like a camouflage value so the way it works is your camouflage value of your tank <laughs> gets your tank in the... a bush yeah, literally. Like, that is, like, primarily the game. You can hide behind buildings or bushes. Um, the camouflage value gets added to your tank's camouflage value, and when you fire from within a bush, it, like, reduces the camo on that bush because people kind of know where you've shot from then. So you can go around. The, basically, the whole premise of the game is to eliminate people. You can't just see everyone on the map all at once and be like, oh, I'll go pick him off over there. You have to sort of, like, push up and encounter people in certain ways. So Stealth everyone's tank game. So yeah, within like it is similar. So with if you're within 50 meters of another tank, it auto spots it for you. But if you're further out than that, then the camouflage comes into effect, and that's why it's dangerous. It's not just a running. You know, you've got to really think about where people can be. Usually so, bushes. Usually bushes, but you can't just blind fire in there because it gives you no indication whatsoever that you've hit or penetrated their armor or anything like that. It just does not tell you. You could be firing and hitting somebody. And they're like, what the fuck? But you have no indication. So you could just be wasting your ammo and getting spotted by other people because you're firing. And that's kind of a cool mechanic. So it's not just like, I saw him go into that bush. I'm going to keep firing. I'm going to get hit markers every time I've hit him. It kind of hides that away from you. So it's not as like easy to do. The tanks themselves, it's basically usual shit. Like some have got armor on the tops. Some have got a better armor on the sides. And if you penetrate, you can get obviously the full, full amount of damage. If it deflects or ricochets, then they literally take no damage. So you're, in some cases, outclassed by bigger tanks, but not if you've got the right type of round in the tank and hit the right spot, if you know the weaknesses of all the tanks. So it gets a little bit in-depth with that kind of stuff. But for the most part, just enjoying shitting on and getting shit on, to be to be honest. Like, it's just something a bit different. So it's free to play. You get all these pop-ups. Completely free to play. It um, is a bit pop-up-y on the, on the homepage. And but if you just... Is it play to win though? Pay to win. Pay to win, yeah. Um not particularly because you can upgrade your tanks to so you get what are called premium tanks, which are just like off the bat fully upgraded. But you can also get the same model of tank and upgrade it to all of that. Right. Anyway. So it's And how long would it take really... you to get there? Not not well, I've blasted through three tiers in over the weekend. I played it Saturday and Sunday night, so not too difficult. It's starting to get a bit more difficult now and go to the higher tiers, so it's not, yeah. you know, it's going to get a bit more grindy, but it's not the type of grind where it's like, I can't be arsed with this. I'm just about, like, I'm a te I'm like 100 hours in and I've only just started to get the fucking gun upgrade for my tank. It's, it's kind of like, play about 10 matches and you've got yourself like a couple of upgrades for your tank, so it does just chuck you through quite quickly. Um... But the best, I think the best, one of the best parts is you can play as like a proper platoon and communicate properly. You can just like gun go it and go single player and you, you suffer for that because you've got idiots on your team that are like pushing you up fucking stairs and shit and getting you caught out. Just random bits like that. But for the most part, if you play with other people, you can sort of come on, like actually call out properly and do stuff. Even though the spotting mechanic is on screen, you can be like, right, I know there's a guy down this end of the map give him a quadrant and stuff like that and yeah just been just been trialing it really not didn't go in with many expectations and came out kind of happy that i tried it so 
yeah mm. fair enough seen it on the back of magazines quite a lot and uh, yeah. obviously on telly as well as uh, adverts a um really polished game really polished uh, looks brilliant and runs well as well can't complain about it like mm. in terms of that it's not like a janky mess that's still being fixed it seems pretty solid there's three of them, isn't there? Is it World of Tanks, World of Warships, and is there a, like an, um, a plane-based one as well? I'm not 100% sure. I don't. I know it's War Gaming, isn't it, that do it, but I've yeah. not seen any of the other games. World of Fly um, Birds. World Big. of... Flappy Bird, that's it. Thanks, That's Chris. it, yeah. <laughs> World, World of Flappy Bird. World of Flappy Bird. Yeah. I think there is a ship one on steam which is called world of tanks blitz i'm not sure if that's supposed to be so if you're looking out for it don't get confused i think world of tanks blitz is literally like a clone that someone's made or it might be the console version and mobile version that's it it's the mobile version of the game but done on steam and that's trash in comparison like uh. you will you'll be like why the textures look bad what you're playing world of tanks <laughs> no but you're playing world of tank blitz like oh shit i'm playing the mobile part what's wrong with you <laughs> What's wrong having a shit on all these mobile peasants? <laughs> they should have plugged a keyboard and mouse into their Androids. I play PUBG Mobile, but I've got a <laughs> keyboard and mouse. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, so that's what I've been playing this week slash weekend, really. Well. And is this something it, you think you're going to keep going with, then? I'll keep with it until it... Yeah. Let's see, how, let's see how you get on in a couple more tiers, see if the grind gets yeah, too too difficult. if it gets too much. I mean, I think the end game sort of appeals to me as like, oh, you can get into clans, but I don't know if I can dedicate enough time to get into a clan, if I'm honest. I can't ded enough, dedicate enough time at the minute to play fucking normal video games, never mind clan up and like have to dedicate a day a week to it. Like, yeah. Gets a bit too much commitment for me. <laughs> All I know is that one of my friends has spent a disproportionate amount of money playing a free-to-play game called World of Tanks, and that's why I won't play it. I believe <laughs> I believe it's easily in the hundreds of pounds he's spent on that game. I'm going to take one guess at who that is, but I won't mention his name. I'll talk to you after about it. <laughs> you may be surprised. <laughs> yeah, it's it's right. not it's not again one that's particularly appealed to me. Um, I feel like if I want to play. Not tank simulator, but if I want to play with tanks, I'm going to play a planet side or something like that. Yeah, it's quite. I completely a... understand that. I get the same vibe from planet side, though. I'm assuming we're talking about planet side two. Well, one and two very similar, but two is just more. more modern, yeah, it's kind just kind of any game with credits. Like whenever I pick up a free to play, I'm always like, I'm not, I'm not fucking spending money on this game. I'm doing it like purposeful i don't care what you entice me with i'm purposefully doing it to see if i can actually get good at a game without putting a, a penny in and planet side i think when i played planet side 2 back in the day i think i did get a bit salty that people have got better shit than me because they'd paid for it but world of tanks doesn't seem that way at the minute that's because everyone's in a tank and you can't see what the you can't see all the blink can't see all the wearing. shekels <laughs> <laughs> can't, can't see all the money bags they've got um but we'll see we'll see it might get worse it might get better i'm not sure i've only spent a weekend with it so far i reckon i reckon you'll give it up in a few weeks you reckon yeah i'm gonna <laughs> call it now oh he's right. challenging you oh let's see mm, just okay. just a quick question about planet side though is it is it pay to win it can be yeah, because you can... That, that's not a very good answer. <laughs> well, I think when you say pay to win, there's there's a distinction between uh, either buying, having to buy something in order to finish the game or to actually compete with other people well, or yeah. and not being able to grind to get to that point. That's pay to win, isn't it, specifically? I think, but, yeah. But there's also pay to win as in buy Battlefield 3 Premium or whatever, and you get you know a ton of weapons that you can get anyway, but you can... Um, like start you, off yeah you can get there quicker with. yeah for someone who's got little ta a little amount of time i don't really have a problem with that model as long as you can grind to get it yeah. um, but if you're paying to get things or loot boxes or you know, anything like that i think that that's a it's an immoral practice for one from the companies but secondly i think I, I just don't feel like the spirit's there in that game and it's it's not it's not for me personally no, the, the last time I, I, I think I've played and rage uninstalled Planet Side 2 three times now because every time I've played it, I felt like I've not progressed anywhere. I've not got anything that makes me capable to fight other people properly. It always feels like I'm at the disadvantage and I don't know whether that's 
I don't know if it's because I'm shit at the game, to be perfectly honest, or whether it's just that the guns that you're given are crap. I have. I'm not. A, I'm not a high level in Planet Side Two. Not played it much at all, but I'm all right at it. I, you know, I'm, I don't die constantly, but it is about. It's you can't go in all guns blazing. There's a lot of tactics involved, and it's better. Again, as Danny would say, with most of the games he enjoys, it's better with friends. You know, you don't. If you solo it, you, I get bored very quickly if I solo. But I have played with mates occasionally, and it's been all right. But it's it's not my not really my kind of game. MMOs, things that are persistent and always online. I get I get a little bit I get a little bit attached to them, and and I don't I don't have the time for that in my life now. I play a lot of games, yeah. but I want to put them down when I want to put them down. You know. Yeah, free, free to play, and just specifically Planet Side Two. It's always been a flip of a coin on the day whether or not I feel good about playing it or I feel terrible about playing it. Like, it depends who you encounter. Like, if I have five bad encounters where I'm just like, well, I didn't even, like, get a chance to pull the trigger before he just instead me or whatever, then I'd have a bad day. But if I got a few kills prior and then it started to, like, degrade, but there was a bit of a back and forth, then I'd feel like, oh, okay, it's not so bad. But, yeah, definitely, like, flip of a coin as to what you encounter with a lot of free-to-play stuff. Um, at this point, with World of Tanks, not sh I'm probably just really shit at the game, so it's not, like, hit me at this point as to why I'm losing all the time. I'm probably bad with tactics and bush tactics in particular, like that kind of thing. It's <laughs> just, uh, I've got this image of this tank fucking sat in a, in a bush that's about this big. Like, this tank is going, you can't see me. 100% no. cover, mate. No, no. So it does, it does, if you're poking out, you're seen. Like, it's if you're in a bush. So the bushes are pretty big. Then. The bushes are pretty big. I think we, should start, is... <laughs> we should start a Patreon series about Danny's bush tactics. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I'm probably just shit at the game at the minute. And if once I get better, I'll be able to better pick apart whether it is that kind of model where it is literally just people have got better shit than me by paying money. I think it is. I think it's, it's an exploitative game that exploits people who like mill sims and who like um, tanks specifically. You know, it's like a train simulator game that, you know, is aimed at a very specific audience. Um, about 60 DLCs out of five or each. Yeah. That, well, or, yeah, DLC kind of model or, um, yeah, and the DLCs are literally just a new skin with with altered speed and acceleration, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it, yeah not, not particularly for me, but then again, I'm not an MMO guy, you know, I don't have, I don't know, it, it's not MMO, but you know what I mean? I don't really get, Yeah. I don't play online games that often unless it's co-op with mates or yeah. I really, really do fancy, like, getting online Something. for some reason but it's very very rare yeah. all right cool so moving on then i'm going to quickly go through games that i'm currently playing it's not a big list this this week i've talked about them all already dying like the following nearly completed i'm at 90 percent story completion i'm avoiding the story and trying to do all the side quests as always thoroughly enjoyable still every week haven't gone off it it's brilliant um zelda Link's awakening finished it off um didn't take me very long i only played it for a couple more hours after last week and finished it again 42 43 quid yeah i was about to mention that <laughs> how are you but it's I, it's not going to go down in in value in either you know i, I could sell it oh, for yeah. probably 35 now um so yeah it's still gone down in value but you know what i mean and i'm a collector yeah. so i don't mind so much that it will never go down in price that game it will always be 42 43 quid or maybe a couple of quid less. Nintendo games don't really um, depre yeah. deprecate. No. Uh, West of Loathing, keep going back to that again. Very funny, enjoying it. Good good with mates. Again, I, can, I tend to do it after I've done my podcasts and go downstairs and quickly jump on if the missus has been on the Steam link. Um, and Bloodborne, which I'm starting to... <clears throat> I'm starting to get to a point where I I'm starting to think it is... One of the best games, one of the best designed games ever made. It is so <laughs> the level design is is refreshing. I know everyone said this. I know I'm well late to the party here. It's making me want to go and play Demon Souls and Dark Souls. It's making me want to punish myself because the world is so interesting. It, it's it. Every time I get into a new area, I shit my pants. I've done about four more, uh, three more bosses, not not including the chalice bosses. I've got a few chalice dungeons open now. I've done the witch of Hemwick, I think her name is. Yeah, something like that. I've done a witch. I've done some beast, blood-starved beast or something like that. 
um, and someone else, I can't remember now. Oh, Vic, Vicar Amelia, I did, finally did her. She was nails. It took me ages to get her. I wasted so much insight trying to, I got a, uh, an old hunter to, to help me. Uh, I've forgotten a name, but. A, a summon. Yeah, I, I well, I did that quite a few times. I, I think I did maybe about six tries with the hunter, and then I thought, I'm just wasting my insight here. I want to use it for things later on. Um, and apparently, if you build your insight right up, the game gets harder as well, um, which I found out after I hit 15 insights, all the enemy attacks finished, changed, and I was like... <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, and uh, I, I'm, I, I finally did it without the Huntress by just being patient and dodging at the right time, learning her attacks. And it's the same with every enemy, but... Just when you think the game has has you've you've got good at the game, you go into a new area or something changes in the game, like the insight thing, or or you 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 encounter the same enemy, like the brick trolls. You know, got up to a new brick troll, more health on them, and you think, oh, fair enough. But the attacks change just ever so slightly, and you get nailed by them, and you're like, fuck's sake. And you like you get overconfident with people, and that's how the game's designed to do that, and it's so good for that. And I hate dying. I hate dying in games, but it's so good. And, and... it knows exactly how to punish you, and just how you expect the game to be. And just as you you get to the point where you're comfortable, it pulls the rug just a little bit out from under your feet, just enough feet to go shit, <laughs> and that's it. Oh, can I get back there and get my blood echoes, or not? I've just I walked around a corner, right, into this like puddle thing. I'm in the forest, forbidden forest or something at the moment. Um, I walked around this corner into a puddle. There's a, a an enemy I've seen it 500 times before, and it did the same thing. And then someone throws a bloody Molotov down, and I was in oil, and I explode and lose all my th blood. And I'd, I can't see them, couldn't see them anywhere, so I just left them in the end. Like thirty thousand blood echoes. <sighs> Everybody who's played Bloodborne will will know exactly how that how I feel though about that. But I can't any, stop any going Souls back to, game. I can't stop going back to it. I think I'm going to um, get. I've got Dark Souls on the PC, the original first one. Um, I think I'll give that a go at some point if I can get it working because I know I had problems getting it working. And then I might go back, maybe buy them for PS4 or PS3. I don't, I don't know which ones are on which. They'll probably be HD remakes, I imagine. I, I think you can get the um, Dark Souls remastered as well for about three pound if you own the original, mm. which it, it's basically just the the DS fix, but it's it's a little it smoother. Works. Yeah, on the straight but, download, it just works on it. So. I'd rather it just works. So I'll probably do that yeah. to be fair. Um, and I think I'm going to go for Sekiro as well. Shadows Die Twice because I, I mm, think right. I'm now a convert. I've I've avoided it for years. I've avoided that entire franchise. I never tried it because I thought it's just hard for the sake of being hard. I'm not going to like that. I hate dying in games, but there's just something about it that makes me want to play so much. It punishes you just enough. Just enough. It hasn't become annoying. I mean, even Vicar Amelia, who I, I must have done it, I tried her about 20, maybe even 30 times. I, I still wanted to do her. I, I just want... I, you, don't even, you don't even get a good reward after killing her. That's the thing. <laughs> You've seen her. She's fit, mate. <laughs> You don't get a good reward apart from that sweet satisfaction that I did her. <laughs> <laughs> and then, power to you. <laughs> the thing is, after I did Vicar Amelia, I then did the Blood Star Starved Beast, and then did the Witch. Um, and the Witch. Your easy. libido knows no ends, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> they were absolutely piss easy. I did the Blood Starved Beast within two, and the Witch within two, I think. And I didn't use any tricks. I, I read up on them afterwards, and I was like, you can use some blood, or so you can throw the blood vial or whatever for the Blood Star Beast, and you, he distracts him. And didn't use any of that. Um, and the the witch, I think I just looked out on the second go. I just did, did a straight away. And I only got killed the first time because I didn't know what was going on. Like a mad one spawned and then two witches were next to me. I was like, <laughs> but that's the way of the game. Anyway, yeah, I'll shut up about it. Bloodborne, brilliant. I'll talk about my, my. Uh, oh no, I've talked about my other game, which was RimWorld, which I've been playing to death. Well, it sounded like you had about another half hour of content. If you want to just keep rattling it off. <laughs> I can't, well, I'll do that after, after Matt. Uh, you 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 talk about your game, <laughs> right? So this week I've been playing Clone Hero, which for those of you that don't know is essentially the open source version of Guitar Hero. I, I don't know if it's open source or not actually, but it's definitely it's essentially a remake of Guitar Hero for the PC. 
which has the advantage of people can put custom tracks on. Mm. So you can download set lists that people have made online. I can't really tell you where because I don't know exactly how legal any of it is. But the game itself is. The game itself is just a launcher. So, yeah, you've got the option to play pretty much any song you want in Guitar Hero. It, it's kind of hard to argue with. Like I, I stopped playing Guitar Hero a long time ago just because it's... I started playing guitar and I got a bit pissy about it. You I became guess. you became snobby. Yeah, well, elitist. It's not that. It's just I found buttons. I found certain songs easier to play on the guitar than they were on a fucking plastic controller. <laughs> and after that, it's like I just thought, no, I can't do this. It's stupid, st stupid kids game. But I have been playing it a little bit with my girlfriend this week, and it's yeah, it, I, I kind of get the fun again. Although I am. I am hopelessly out of practice with it, mm. but it's, I get the fun again. I, I've kind of distanced myself enough from it to, to kind of just look through the, the songs and just enjoy it. And especially now that you've got basically any song you want, anything from like the last 20 years, all the way down to the most obscure, bizarre metal you could want. It's yeah. Is it grind core? Is it a bit like us? By the, the way bucket that is it Sorry. a bit like Osu in the way that it's community driven with the tr the maps <clears throat> for the tracks telling you what to press and then the music kind of just plays in the background? Yeah. Because uh, it's well, similar. I, th I think it'll either be, there's some custom music. People have provided custom tracks because I, I was watching some YouTube videos today because I had heard of Clone Hero, but I didn't know what it was. I actually didn't, my brain didn't connect it to Guitar Hero. I played lots and lots of Guitar Hero and, and Rock Band and stuff. I will be out of practice though, um, but I'm, I think I'm I'm going to grab it and have a go with my mates because I think we'll uh, we'll have a laugh with that. Um, I'm assuming any USB controller will work, like Xbox USB it controllers. Should, it, it should do. I mean, I, I found an old USB guitar hero controller, so we've just been using that. And uh, it's, yeah, it's essentially just guitar hero all over again, but a little bit more, you can configure more with it. You can set things like, you can set it so it's like no fail and things like that quite right. easily. So... You know, you can practice songs if you want. And it, it just, like, all all the set lists are there from all the games. And then there's this giant repository of other set lists. So, like... Um, are one they of janky? Are they, are they the community ones janky? Like... Not that I've seen. I, I'm sure there are some that are a bit... A bit... Meh, you know. A bit yeah, wrong. In a word. But there are a lot of them that are just... I, I don't know. Some of them, I couldn't tell you if they're janky or not because the songs are that fast. It's just stupid. <laughs> like, listening to... One um, one of my friends who will be at LAN this weekend plays it quite a bit, and you should see him play some of the metal tracks because it is hilarious to watch. It's literally just like someone's throwing bucketfuls of notes down the screen. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen <laughs> a lot of that. I uh, Yeah, I'm a, I was a fan, and again, I just stopped playing <laughs> just because I put, I think, the 360 in the attic. That's the only reason, I think. And yeah, um, I had it on PS2 and 360, had all of them, got all the custom versions of Metallica, apart from the Beatles one, uh, I got the Metallica one, you know, I, I was, I'm a big metal fan myself, so I was I was all over the Slipknot and the, uh, you know, various other rock uh, tracks and that. But yeah, I think I'm, I'm going to grab it. I'm, I'm well up for that. I am well up for it. It's worth it. Just, as I say, there's so much to go through. Anything you want to listen to, it, it doesn't seem to matter how obscure it is. In fact, the more obscure it is, the better, apparently, because then people can be like, oh, <laughs> I finished this 95%. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I, ima yeah, I imagine there's a lot. Apparently, it's, it's revived the Guitar Hero kind of online, you know, streaming and things like that as well. How, how new is it? I'm not sure, to be perfectly honest with you. I think it's at least a couple of years old. Because there's been, a, I know there was betas out years back. Um, like there was really rubbish graphics and stuff, but they've imported graphics from Guitar Hero, I think, uh, which in itself says to me, I'm not sure how legal it is. Um, I wouldn't like to speculate. Mm. Still. To be honest. Okay. But... I didn't create it. <laughs> no. Can't, I can't tell you that, you know, you just have to YouTube the video to find out where to download the songs from. Yeah, I've, I've already got lists, don't worry. I've figured it out. <laughs> not, that I, not that I'll ever do that. But, it, it know, sorry, Metallica. Like... So's Lars. <laughs> oh, he's going to be mad. He's going to be he jumping will. up and down in his solid gold hot tub. See him clicking through, <laughs> clicking through, doing 
I don't know, he'll have some algorithm yeah, yeah. running that'll pick up everything to do with Metallica on YouTube and including I, this ten ten minute stretch of our podcast right in the middle of two other forty minute blocks, it'll pick that up fine. No yeah, worries. Easy. I, dead easy. I, I bet he's still mad at Napster. I bet he can't let it go. <laughs> oh god. Uh, well. Right, so yes, I I won't I won't witter on about Rimworld much longer. But I got I just want to go on about the prothesis a little bit more. <laughs> Can I set a timer? Can you have another two minutes and that's it? <laughs> right. So I just I just want to witter on about the prothesis just a little bit more. So if your guys in the, in the game have the vo- all the body parts can be damaged individually. So when they're in a firefight or when they're out hunting and they get mauled by a bear or or they get an infection somewhere or they get malaria or something like that, someone can arrive and have asthma in one of the lungs or both of the lungs or something. Some of them. Can go on like this uh, smoke leaf binge, or they can, uh, which is basically weed. You can grow oh, right, weed okay. in, in the in the game, uh, smoke leaf, and uh, they go on on a binge. And if they do that too much, they'll they'll basically get asthma, or they'll get cancer, and they'll eventually die. And you have to put them in palliative care and things like that. But the prosthesis, the way that it works is, if they get an injury on the leg and it's a scar, it'll lower the speed by like a percent or something. If they get a, a serious injury on the leg, it'll lower it quite a lot, so like 90%, so they'll be running around slowly. But if you get prosthesis and you can get different grades of them from traders and you can create them in your own uh, factories and stuff, um, you, you, you basically do an operation on them, um, replace the leg, and then that'll, that'll put the speed up to 120%. So by the end of like my last big game that I played, everybody was bionic in my entire thing because they all had like they were all dashing around uber fast because they all had bionic they're doing things dead quick because they had bionic eyes and stuff so they were crafting things like 120 150 percent speed um what's up dad my legs are fine no they're not (laughs) (laughs) you can you can euthanize people as well on the operating table if you want to Oh, it's not worth it, boys. It's going to use one too many screws. Ax him. Oh, it's, 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 I want that bionic cock for myself. Pull the plug. <laughs> one of the uh, one of the other things that's happened as well in the past is if you leave somebody out in like a toxic storm, you've got areas that you set on the map, and you you control exactly where people can go. And um, so you'll set an area and say this is inside or under under cover. Uh, if this toxic storm of, uh, occurs. Sometimes you'll need somebody to be out because all of the all of the plants and everything I said they all die eventually, and all of the animals will die on the map as well. So it's best to send someone out and get them to kind of gather the crops as quickly as possible. If you leave them out there too long, they'll get cancer, and then about eighty percent cancer or eighty <laughs> percent carcinogens or whatever it's called on the on the body, they'll they'll sometimes they'll get dementia. And then that means they basically they just wander around doing things and knacking things and destroying things, and you can't control them anymore. And they don't—they're not actually productive. They might be, but it'll be lucky if they are. If you know, <laughs> come just... in, Doris. We need to replace your legs. <laughs> <laughs> you just euthanize them in that instant. Exactly. <laughs> We've got her on, boys. <laughs> the only reason that I actually survived that, like ca- that that list of catastrophes, they said the toxic storm, heat wave, money, money in. Money in Yorkshire Terriers. It's because you had like a, a bin full of limbs you could just chuck out for the Terriers. <laughs> well, like, the, the thing, the reason it's called a story simulator, if you go look at Dwarf, Dwarf Fortress and you read up on the people who are really into Dwarf Fortress, they write entire blogs every day in their game. They document exactly what's happened because there's an entire history log that goes on and they'll, they'll write it like an expedition that's went out, as Dwarf Expedition, and really get into it, you know, really... And it, you could do the same with Rimworld, and I'm sure there's stuff out there for it. Um, forgot what I was going on about. Why did I go into that? The you, you survived. Prosthesis. The reason you survived oh. all of these events. Yeah, so the reason I survived all these events is just before the toxic thing um, happened, the toxic fallout, Somebody, some traders came to my camp, and I had just enough money to like buy four pigs, right? I bought four pigs off them. They ended up, um, I started training them and stuff, so they the pigs haul things as well, so certain animals will haul um, like rocks around and stuff if you train them up. Are they um, bionic pigs? No, but you can't make them bionic either, I don't oh. think. Oh. I haven't seen that. There might be a mod. There might be a mod for that. Um, Come on. <laughs> the animals are much simpler than the humans, but they still have, this can still form bonds with the humans as well, so it makes people happier if, you, if you've got an Alsatian or something and 
you know, someone forms a bond with them, you get them to kind of follow them around and defend them and do kinds of stuff. Um, so the only reason I survived is because I got these pigs. I slaughtered the pigs very slowly because I was starving as well at this point. I slaughtered the pigs like one a day so people were just about surviving. They were all heavily malnutritioned. Um, and then I got raided. And then when the pirates, when I killed the pirates, I used... It doesn't do it by default, but you have to set certain settings on the on the benches. Um, I got them to butcher and eat the can uh, the the pirates, and that's the only reason they survived. So that lowers their mentality, their, their kind of mental state. So they all went like minus twenty mental because they were they just butchered someone and killed them and stuff. And every everything kind of everything affects everything, and you have to make people extremely happy to to succeed in the game. And I can totally see how Danny wouldn't buy it if Danny's not into that kind of thing. If you so, can't do Prison Simulator, there's no chance of Rimworld. Yeah, I didn't think so. <laughs> so let, let me just kind of kick out a situation. Tell me if it's possible or not. You, mad with power, Chris, <laughs> tell everybody to become complete robots except for the stomach and then eat their old bodies. Is that something you could do? Um, I don't think... I don't think... When you lop a limb off, that limb becomes available. I think the only way it's the other way around. So if someone dies and you put them in like a corpse stockpile, because you can make a corpse stockpile, um, or you can bury them in graves. Um, what what happens is animals will come up to them if they're if it's accessible by the animals, or if you've got no other food in the colony, people, the the colonists will go and start eating the corpses. <laughs> They'll eat them by default, but it's literally the last case scenario when they're absolutely on their ass and they're about to die. Um, so no, you can't. I don't think you can do that, but it would be good oh, if you could. That that's a modding opportunity. If anybody wants to give us partial credit, it's got a Steam Workshop, and I bet you, I bet you, there's a mod out there for that. If not, get on it, guys. I'll I'll play it. I'm actually <laughs> playing without mods mod. this time round. Um, Rimworld mod, lop and chop. <laughs> <laughs> I, might, I might be wrong, you know, because I haven't actually done any operations on people this time, and I last played it a couple of years ago, so it might now be that you, you lop a limb off and that becomes available as a bit of meat, <laughs> a bit of human meat. <laughs> nice. Anyway, wow. yes, I love it, and I, and it's your you guys' fault that I'm playing it again, because I needed a game to sell. <laughs> oh, so yeah. you, you're welcome. Yeah? <laughs> it's good, though, it really it's thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyable. Right, so let's move on to our next section. Preview Hot Pants. Oh, I had a so, load of games I wanted to talk about this week, but I'm going to let Matt go first. Well, the first thing I wanted to talk about this week is the Nintendo Switch Lite has already got problems and it's been out for, I believe, a week. Is that right? Um, the Lite's the one without the disconnected Joy-Cons, isn't it? Yeah, it's the but, mobile only one as well. You can only use it. That's the one, yeah. Hot portable. Um, so, see, I was thinking it was the disconnect issues. It's the, the drift issues, isn't it? That they've got. It's yeah, the uh, Joy-Con drift issue, which was a big problem for a lot of people, is still there apparently. Right. Which is always good to know that it's been through hardware revisions and they've missed a bit. It'll have been designed and probably halfway through production when they started figuring it out with the original switch i would imagine though nintendo like to plan ahead don't they yeah probably so but at the same time it's it strikes me so that someone still has to have gone at some point oh well you know this is a problem there's a likelihood of the problem on this part it's probably at that point just what's going to be more expensive to redesign everything and redo it or to just fix it and well, i imagine that's probably what's happened they'll have looked at the failure rates and went Right, it's two percent or ten percent or fifteen percent. That's going to cost us X amount impact assessments, isn't it? No, that's going to cost us two and a half million dollars or something to to fix that or to 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 fix people's Joy-Con issues. Yes, it's annoying to the consumer, but it all comes down to capitalism and consumer. You know, it's not all recall everything and fix everything, which will cost us twenty million. True. Or um, uh, that ridiculously low figures probably for Nintendo, but you know what I mean. It'll be it'll be that kind of thing. Yeah. So I mean, I have another drift issue. I've had the disconnect issue with the blue Joy-Con, 
uh, random just disconnect while I've been playing with them wirelessly, but I haven't had the drift issues yet. I've not had it either, but it's just, it annoys me that it's a known issue and it's still a known issue. And I appreciate, like Danny said, that it's it'll have been in production for a long time already, but it's still something that we all know about it and it's the same thing again. And I imagine maybe on future production runs, they might fix it. I don't know if it's something that they've caught up to fixing with the current switch, but it's still, I don't, I don't really like that it's still an issue. I find it weird because Nintendo are known for the quality assurance as well. They're known for doing, they're not perfect. No company's perfect, but they're known no. for being very good at releasing games without bugs. Um, very good for releasing hardware that's generally quite good. There are issues with pretty much every console that, that they've released, but I've never had problems apart from the NES where you had to put the cartridge in and push it to the left ever so slightly. Once it's once it's pushed down for actually get it working, and then you have to turn it on and off fifteen times before it'll actually work when it gets old. Um, I don't know what that issue is, but it was before the internet. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was before the internet, so it wasn't widespread propagated the, the knowledge on that. And I don't play it, it enough probably, now to figure out what it is. So it's probably an article in a Nintendo magazine of one edition at some point. Yeah, at least. yeah. <laughs> if you've got this, tough. Nintendo don't care. <laughs> Buy a new Nintendo. Love Nintendo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know that's, what else to say, to be fair. The, the... That sucks a little bit, doesn't it? It, puts, mm... it? it just kind of takes the wind out of the sails a little bit. I mean, I'm I'm sure it's a small issue, but for the people who have it, it's still an issue. Hopefully it's one of those things that's just a simple warranty issue and they swap it out. They, they swapped out my um, broken left Joy-Con blue one, which I think it's a left, the blue one. Um without issues but it took six weeks that's a problem yeah. and i couldn't use my switch for six weeks I, this was right at the beginning of me but you know when i just bought it as well and i had breath of the wild and i wanted to play that but first world problems and that you know there are people starving yeah, yeah. in the world <laughs> i know but True. where's my video games yes and chris is dying of thirst the thirst for zelda <laughs> yes um no oh. Right, so have you, have you heard about the announcement for, uh, not the announcement, the tweet from Hideo Kojima about, about Death Standing, uh, Stranding, Stranding, where he's, he's, everyone's asking him, is it a stealth game? It's based on the new video that came out. Is it a stealth game? And he said, look, I'm sick of you all asking. So here's a link to an article. It's not a stealth game. It's not an action game. It is a, what did he call it? A social strand action game. Have you heard that to start off with? No. So, apparently a social strand action game is something to do with being connected to other people. I still don't know what it is, what it's going to be. I haven't watched any of the promo videos on purpose, and I won't be watching them. I've seen clip, like little bits, you know, and I've seen, I know who's in it roughly, and I've seen the baby in the jar, and ladders being put up, and things like that, and that's all I really know. I've seen people walking over vast landscapes, but I don't care. I'm a fanboy and I want it. Simple as that. It's going to be different. But the the social strand thing is supposed to be that it's supposed to be to do with being connected to other people while you're playing the game. So if someone leads a lad leaves a ladder somewhere, you might see that ladder. You know, like in Dark Souls where you can leave notes for people or you can do other things. Um, right. Apparently, there's a lot of games that do that kind of thing now. You can invade people's games and not just Dark Souls, but you know. Loads of them. There's loads of games that do that these days. But I don't really know what that means. He's he's touting this as a new genre, a new gaming genre. And this is the same guy that came up with tactical ex espionage action for um, Metal Gear Solid, okay. <laughs> which was its own kind of genre, but you end up spending the entire time running around, hiding in vents and you know, running oh. away from people and them forgetting about you 10 seconds later. <laughs> you know? Goldfish guards, yep. yeah. You know, in that really secret facility. Oh, that guy that we just saw. Oh, don't worry about it. Oh, yeah, he's gone. Does it's anybody gone. remember a ninja? A what? <laughs> Shut up. Get back to work. Do you remember that <laughs> guy? Cold. He looked a bit like Christopher Walken. It was, <laughs> no, you know, he was he was modelled after Christopher Walken, um, the original Solid Snake. I, I, I could completely see that with the 15 polygons that he used for his face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Hi, guy. <laughs> Iroquois Pluskin. 
I got the missus to play the very first level of Metal Gear Solid, the original Metal Gear Solid, on... Uh, we were out having a burger in a local place, and they uh, they have the mini consoles set up. And uh, I got her to play the very first level, and I swear she just pressed circle over and over again, which was which is crouch. Crouch, get up, crouch, get up, crouch, get up, crouch, get up. And then when she was on the ground and she was prone, you know, crawling. prone crawling, yeah. did not get up. Died within seconds, <laughs> that first area. Just not a game for people who don't play games that game. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know what to think of that. I don't know if it makes me more excited or or less excited. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I think... Wouldn't that be a mechanic rather than, like, defining a genre, though? Well, it's not, me? it's not got guns in it. You're not shooting people. It's not a stealth game, but it's an action game. Yeah, but like what I mean by like, so you're saying it's a social stranding game. So if if that's a, can it be a genre if it's just a mechanic in a game? Like you can see things that have been left by other people. I don't know. I I think this is, I think this is a make or break for Kojima because it's the first time he's. I mean, he's done other games before, um, yeah. or before Metal Gear, and he's done little bits here and there, but none of them have been as good as that franchise. None of them have been as uh, I think. Can't remember the, the the one. It was a police game or some time cops or something. It was called from before the Metal Gear um, Metal Gear games. It was oh. on the MSX, the um, Japanese console, Japanese only console. Uh, but anyway, he he he's done a few other other ones, and yeah, they've they've done all right. But you know, maybe in Japan, but they've not particularly done all right in the West. But Metal Gear Solid is is massive, you know. Uh, or, or at least massive in the cult world. You know, not yeah. everybody likes it. But this is totally out there. And I've no idea what to expect. We've only got a month now. What are we in September? Just coming up. October, no. Coming up. And it's out yeah. November the 5th, I think. If I'm right. Are you guys going to get it? Are you interested in it at all? I'm interested, but I'm interested in it the way I'm interested in an art film. Just, I want to kind of see it just so I can kind of look at it, if that makes sense. It's I just want to kind of know what the fuck is happening. It's, <laughs> it's, it's more of a spectacle, I think, for me. Like I, I don't want to watch it and be like, oh, yes, I see exactly what he's getting at with this thing. I just want to watch it and go, what? I don't need Danny to answer. I don't know what his answer is going to be. Go on. No. <laughs> no, it's a I game, isn't it? Not interested. Fuck those games. I only I only play DVDs, mate. <laughs> I only play on my CD or <laughs> um, I have not kept up to I've heard the name, I've seen Norman Reedus modelled in it. I've said this before on a previous podcast, and I'm just gonna leave it at that. And if it's a decent price and I have the money at the time, I'll pick it up and give it a go knowing it's a Kojima game and just see what happens. I really don't want to get myself excited for it. I just want to see it like pop up in the Steam store. It's like, oh, that released today. Cool. Buy it or not buy it. Maybe later down the line or whatever. I'll try it out. I just don't want to... <sighs> There's a part of me that's thinking he's keeping everything secret. I mean, he's good at it anyway. He's good at um, poking the public. And he always has been with Metal Gear releases. He knows what to say and how to say it to get people excited. And everyone's lived up to the hype in my eyes so far. But this one, I feel like he's doing that Nobody knows what to expect from it, and it is his make or break. But I'm not sure if he if it's if it's going to work. I don't know yet, but I'm still going to get it, and I'm probably still going to get it on release day. Um, it's very few games I do that with these days, but it's, I'm not pre order. I don't pre order, but I will get it on release day. I think I am interested to see how it actually is as a game because I just can't really figure out what if anything, you actually do. Yeah. Like, where... What? What? What's the point? It could just be... I mean, the missus is playing um, Uncharted at the moment, the original Uncharted downstairs. I've got all four of them. I've played the first one through twice. I can't really remember much about it. Like, maybe played a bit of the second one, and the third and fourth I've never touched. And I'm sure the fourth is, fourth is brilliant, but they're just boring to me, them games. They don't have much to them. You know, it's on rails, shooting, shoot a lot of guys, move to the next area, shoot a lot of guys, maybe see a cutscene, do a little puzzle, possibly. You know, it's, it's there's not much there for me. Um, but 
it's all story. And that's what I'm thinking this might be. I'm thinking this might be an interactive film where you're walking across these beautiful landscapes and you've got a beautiful um, score accompanied by great cutscenes and really intriguing, weird... I mean, I, I don't know if there's any supernatural element to it because he does like to add that into his um, I stories. I, I don't want to give you too much away, but I think there is. Right. I, I said I've seen little bits, but not enough to... I certainly can't formulate any kind of idea about what the game's about. I I'm, don't think Hideo Kojima can either. <laughs> I, yeah. I just hope it hasn't been rushed as well if you know not i don't worry about bugs necessarily i worry about what happened at the end of metal gear solid 5 where the last couple of hours of the game was it was a wonderful game but it the story it was really really good and then just it was like and then this happened and that happened and then we did this and then it was done you know it's like really really rushed right at the end um i hope they haven't done that to get it out and appease publishers and finances you know but yeah. we'll see we will. Was it a good I'd, idea letting him go off in Konami? We'll see. I'd I'd give him more credit than that. He seems like the sort of person that wouldn't allow that where possible. He allowed it with but, Metal Gear. Mm. But he, there was, I mean, there was contention between him and Konami. So, yeah, I don't know. I, I really don't know. This is literally all conjecture. I've got no idea. Well, we'll find out soon. We will. We will. All right. Um, what else have we got to talk about? Uh, Danny's I, got I, no I, news, as always. What are you I, here for, Danny? Honestly. I, I don't know, mate. We'll reevaluate that after. <laughs> All right, Matt. You got I, I, Well, I do, but I'm not sure how much we're going to get out of it. And I'd rather spend the remaining time talking about your last point that I can see on the overview because it's right. something that I'm quite eager to play myself. <laughs> I've heard, okay, so I've heard rumors about, about this game. Um, I've heard rumblings rather, not rumors. Um, this is the Untitled Goose Game. I heard rumblings a few weeks ago. It got released only a week ago, I think. Um, but it's on the Switch and it's on Epic Store. I'm going to get it on the Switch, absolutely, definitely. And there's a guy that I am talking to, potentially coming on this podcast as a guest and potentially coming on my other podcast as a guest because he's similar to me. He's in the games and he's in software development. Um, and he said, oh, I'm going to get a Switch soon and I want to get that Untitled Goose Game. And I was like... What's it called then? <laughs> well, and then I realised it was called Untitled Goose Game. And I've watched some little videos and it looks pretty good. It looks like my kind of thing. Just run around in a town causing trouble as a goose. You know, cheeky little goose. That is quite literally all what you do. You run around and you pinch people, pinch things from people, and you honk at people. And you just do shit. And it's like slapstick comedy. You know, like Monty Python crossed with... I don't know. Why do I... Sorry. I kind of feel like this is going to be another goat simulator type game. Well... But maybe possibly, a bit more to it. I, I think it's more scenario oriented. You have like yeah. a list of things to do in each little scenario. Can If you may, if I may, I've just got the page up. I just look, like to read some of the featuring stuff that comes with this game. So, Untitled Goose Game featuring... A horrible goose, that's you. A town full of people just trying to get on with their day, you hate them. And also, <laughs> this is my favourite point, a dedicated honk button. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm sold. You know, I'm, <laughs> looking, I'm looking at this and I'm actually... Uh, I'm, I'm like... completely sold. <laughs> apparently, it's. Not, I don't think it's co-op, but apparently it's really good to play with friends because there's puzzles in it. And you, you, you all want to try and work out how to do the puzzles. I don't know if it's finite and there's a certain way to do the puzzles. I don't know if it's dynamic and you can do things different ways. And you a bit can like get... Hitman or something. You yeah, and I don't you... know how yeah. <laughs> Hitman is a goose. Well, like goose. approach. <laughs> Hit honk. <laughs> like you can approach honk him. man. Hit honk. honk man. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a suited guy with a with a goose's head. Um, and if you do want to wait, line, Miami. So, so I'm going to address <laughs> Thorno directly here. If you do want to wait until it's out on Steam, you have to wait until 2020 for it. I don't know I he's still hear. on Epic Store. But, uh... I can ah, hear the that's... anger from here. Oh no, he's got a Switch actually, hasn't he? So he can go for that. Yeah. Oh, so anyway, I, for the, for I those... don't care about his Epic Store, so I'll get that. For, for those of you who, um, who have heard us talk about Thorno a few times, he's actually a, a, a listener and he's also a friend of ours as well. And, and he's he a, was on the show. And he was on the show. And he's a particularly <laughs> um, opinionated gamer, let's say. So that's why we keep uh, mentioning him. 
Um, but anyway, yeah, so I'm... It's it's also by the same devs, devs that did uh, Firewatch. Have either of you played that or heard of it? Nope. I've never heard of it. I've heard of it, but I've not played it. So it's an indie game, Firewatch. Um, it's a st- walking sim slash story type thing. Um, but it's it's quite good, decent, um, very pretty looking game. Simple-ish kind of graphics, but still very pretty. And you play this guy who's on Firewatch in a big forest. Um, and you're, un- you're kind of unraveling a mystery and solving solving what's going on. There's a bit more interactivity and a bit more, a few more things to do than things like Dear Esther and everyone's gone to the rapture and that kind of thing. Um, but it's still, I quite enjoyed it. A couple of hours long, not not a massive game. So if you do, if you are going to get it, don't spend too much on it. I thought I it was like, a. St- st- sorry. I feel like Origin gave it me for free, but I just never looked. Past it's it. possible it's it's been on like PSN and that kind of thing for for free and in, in that. Um, but yeah, done by the same devs that they've been working on it for about two years, I think, on this Untitled Goose game. Um, but yeah, I'm look I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to grab does it. Look- brilliant just like oh, it's 15 quid on switch right now 15 on the switch 12 on the epic games store yeah and i am so i i think it is definitely going to be one that i want to buy i think we all <laughs> need to get it and play it at the Before land LAN, i was gonna say I, that's I the next big thing <laughs> we, need, we need to we need to stream it i just i've always <laughs> it, it's a combination of my two favorite things being a dick and being a dick <laughs> in games well, it's, <laughs> it's uh, it is my number one favorite thing being a goose <laughs> <laughs> always dreamed about being a goose i, I mean do you know what if you it believe it you can achieve it it exactly. implements one of my favorite game mechanics a dedicated honk button there, is, <laughs> there was um a, previously only seen in racing games <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's no. a there's a song uh in the charts at the moment called juice and they've been using that on the promotional video uh, uh I'm not going to sing it. I have no idea. <laughs> Don't listen to the charts, unfortunately. But... Juice the goose? Well, I've got to blame it on a goose. I've got to blame it on my juice. That's some of the lyrics in the song. But it's a pop song, you know. It's Yeah. It doesn't have to be good. Got it. No. it, it <laughs> the missus likes the song anyway, but it's, uh, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm definitely going to get it. I think I might even go and buy it tonight, actually. Ooh. Um, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm it does look pretty funny. <clears throat> myself. Should have used that, shouldn't I? You, I you saw should, that team without actually have played it. You should have done because because <laughs> then I bought it. It's it's and exactly you... the same as when we had um, what what was that game uh, Metal Wolf Chaos the other few. Yeah, <laughs> so, <laughs> you are the president in a robot suit. <laughs> it's like why why did you waste this opportunity? This is an I opportunity didn't... of a lifetime. I, I didn't think. I'm sorry, boys. <laughs> I get. I get. The thing is, I get so excited about some games, and I get so into them, and I spend I spend hundreds of hours playing some games, and then I realise that not everybody likes the same games as me. Yeah, you're all right. Oh, there were berries, by the way, in Rimworld as well. You can pick berries. Oh, well, that's we, what I was missing. We you, guessed. You knew that. Yeah. You played that much on it. There must have been berries. <laughs> right. Should we close up? Should we finish the show? We'll, we'll finish it up. Finish it off. Finish on a high note. Yeah. Or a high... On a high honk. Well. So, yeah. thank you very much, everybody. Thanks for listening. Uh, that's the end of the show. Thank you very much, and we'll see you next time on Resonance Arcade. You can watch all of our shows on youtube.com forward slash Resonance Arcade and visit our website at resonancearcade.com where you can find info about the show and links to all of our social channels. Yes, you can. You can follow us on Twitter at Resonance Arcade, where we publish show announcements and news. And finally, you should, and I must insist, join us in Discord on discord.resonancearcade.com, where we hang out and discuss all things gaming and usually make fun of Danny because he's yep. become a whipping boy. Sorry we've about actually, Yeah, we've, we've actually been active in there recently, haven't we? And why do I feel like Matt's going to try and, like I don't know, sort of like cluster up some kind of fight where he can get take bets for money and stuff in the discord that's what you seem to push the discord pretty hard this week didn't you Matt? I, well i just want <laughs> to see people on there so they can see just the <laughs> human tragedy of you two interacting is hilarious i'm trying to do more stuff in public now you see i'm trying to to go in in public <laughs> more often yeah <laughs> so i've got more defense you see when uh when it all does kick off and he takes some a bit too personally no so, you'll never get me personal I, oh, don't worry. Oh, oh, that sounds like a challenge. That is a challenge. Yeah. I, get I can't, I I can't wait to relax. do a review with you two yeah. just having a shitting match with each other. Hmm. This Friday. 
Four yes, o'clock. this Friday. We're all going to a LAN party, so we might actually play some games on next week's uh, show. Maybe. Maybe. I'll, th- I'll think about it. Yeah. I'll bring, I'll bring the PC for show. Um, he also th- he also thinks that he's going to hand my ass is it my ass to me in what mod ho mod ho mod ho mod ho mod mod ho mod ho is a different game no mod ho <laughs> we'll see I've not played it before and if I report next week that I've beaten Danny to a pulp then I am going to kick you off the podca- podcast that's fair enough you were looking for an excuse weren't you. <laughs> going to throw the match. You don't want to be here. <laughs> right, anyway, all that is left to say is goodbye. Thank you very much. See you later. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Ta-ta.